Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white combo deck titled Flying Fortress, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck is built around Parhelion 2, the 8-mana 5-5 legendary artifact vehicle with Flying, First Strike and Vigilance, has a crew cost of 4, and whenever Parhelion 2 attacks we get to make two 4-4 white angel creature tokens with Flying and Vigilance that are also attacking. So Parhelion 2 is incredibly powerful once we get it going, but the challenge with getting Parhelion going is twofold. First off, the mana cost, 8 mana, is prohibitively expensive to cast in Historic, and then we also need to figure out a way to crew the Parhelion once we do get it in play. And how are we putting Parhelion on the battlefield? Well, we can reanimate it using either Refurbish, a 4 mana sorcery that returns target artifact card from our graveyard to the battlefield, or Trash for Treasure added in the latest anthology, a 3 mana sorcery as an additional cost to cast it, we need to sacrifice an artifact, and then we can return target artifact from our graveyard to the battlefield. And then once we do get Parhelion in play, we can either crew it using a Giant Ox, the 2 mana 06, that can crew vehicles using its toughness rather than its power, and we can also use Karn, the Great Creator, by using the plus 1 ability until our next turn, up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its mana value, so it turns Parhelion into an 8-8, still has flying first rank and vigilance, and still generates those angels when it attacks. So that's how we're gonna start attacking with Parhelion to close out the game. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Of course we do need a few ways of discarding Parhelion so we can get it in the graveyard in the first place, which is where four copies of Faithful's Looting come in handy, can draw two and then discard two, can even flash it back out of the graveyard for two in a red. Then we also have some cheap interaction with Frostbite, dealing two damage to a creature or planeswalker, and we have some snow-covered basic lands with four planes and six mountains to potentially enable Frostbite to deal three damage instead if we control three or more snow permanents. Then we also have the full playset of Terrarion, a one-mana artifact that enters the battlefield tapped. For two mana we can tap and sacrifice it to add two mana in any combination of colors, so that can potentially fix our mana when it comes to turning the white mana from Colossal Plow into red mana. But more importantly, when Terrarion is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we get to draw a card. So Terrarion can be this weird cantrip, but it can also give us an artifact we can sacrifice to trash for treasure, and if we sacrifice it, we still get to draw a card, so we don't lose out on any card advantage. Then at 2 mana, we've got 2 copies of Thrilling Discovery, we get to gain 2 life and then discard 2 cards to draw 3, so another way of discarding Parhelion. And then besides our four copies of Giant Ox, we also have the full play set of Colossal Plow. So sometimes we can play turn 2 Plow, and then turn 3, play Giant Ox to crew the Colossal Plow. And when the Plow attacks, it attacks as a 6-3. We get to add triple white to our mana pool and gain 3 life. And that mana doesn't go away as steps and phases end until end of turn. So we can potentially ramp into some of our more expensive cards as well, thanks to that mana. And again, we can also use Terrarion to change that white mana into red mana potentially. Then at 3 mana, 2 copies of Trash for Treasure, as well as 2 copies of Cease Spoils as an additional discard draw effect that also generates a treasure which we can potentially sacrifice to our Trash for Treasure. And then at the full playset of Refurbish, which for the most part is going to be better than Trash for Treasure. And then at the full playset of Karn, the Great Creator, which besides turning Parhelion into a creature, can also use the minus 2 ability to search our sideboard for an artifact and put it into our hand. And then also has a very powerful passive ability, which essentially shuts down opposing artifacts. And then we've got 7 sideboard artifacts to choose from. Tormod Script as a cheap graveyard hate card, which we can play right away after playing Karn. Then we've got Glass Casket as cheap removal, shines against creatures like Core Spirit Dancer, Sorcerer's Pineglass to shut down opposing activated abilities like Planeswalkers. We've got Cataclysmic Gearhulk as kind of our sweeper of choice that we get to search up with Karn, great against go white creature decks like Elves. Then we've got Sky Sovereign Console Flagship as just a powerful vehicle that we can easily crew with either Karn or Giant Ox and can take down opposing creatures and maybe damage Planeswalkers as well. Then Platinum Angel can be hard to beat for some decks as we cannot lose the game and your opponents cannot win the game as long as it's in play. And then Metal War Colossus, also a great combo with Parhelion, because it costs X less to cast, where X is the total mana value of non-creature artifacts we control, so we can sometimes even play it for free, and we can also sacrifice two artifacts to return the Colossus from our graveyard to our hand, so also combos nicely with Terrarion. 
And then, of course, our four copies of Parhelion going over the mana base, four snow-covered plains, six snow-covered mountains, and then some red-white dual lands with Sacred Foundry, the red-white pathway, and Clifftop Retreat. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Allurus of the Dream Den deck. And we've got a decent hand. We've got our Parhelion, ways to discard it, ways to reanimate it. So we're just missing a way to potentially crew it. And a turn one Frostbite. I think we still cast a Looting here. And then happy to discard Parhelion. And we even picked up a Giant Ox. So turn two we can play Plow. And then turn three crew it with the Ox, which can even help ramp into Refurbish. So I might not need Seize the Spoils. I might not need Frostbite. We'll discard the Seize the Spoils since our opponent might be an aggressive creature deck where Frostbite still comes in handy. But yeah, this is pretty much the ideal start. And Red White's gonna struggle to kill a 6 toughness creature. As we see, Clever Lumimancer. Would be nice to kill with Frostbite, but I'm still gonna play the Plow here. And then next turn, we get to already reanimate our Parhelion. Could have also used Trash for Treasure, sacrificing Plow to bring Parhelion back but might as well gain some life in the process. So our opponents with a wizard burn deck here, maybe. Defiant Strike bumps Lumimancer, so that's gonna hit pretty hard. Possible that they keep up a wizard's lightning to kill Colossal Plow, but nope, opponent taps out for a show of confidence. So Lumimancer gets in for nine damage and is now out of range from our Frostbite as well. Well, time for the old Giant Ox. And then we get to attack. And refurbish Parhelion, and hopefully we're not dead. Our draw couldn't have been much better. If they have to burn spells to kill Giant Ox, they have to burn spells to kill us, since then Lumimancer would deal 6 damage as well. It's gonna be Dreadhorde Arcanists. And Lumimancer stays back. Alright, so we can't quite kill the opponent, since Parhelion will deal 13 in the air. But it should leave us in a pretty dominant position. Uh, sadly, Frostbite can go upstairs. So yeah, we'll crew Parhelion. And then we can always Thrilling Discovery to gain more life. I'll make some Angels, which can also crew the Plow if needed. Opponent takes it. A Wings of the Cosmos on Clever Lumamancer, slightly mistimed here since blockers were already declared. So, luckily they didn't get to kill any of our flyers. And we almost have enough snow covered lands to deal three with Frostbite, but not quite. We'll pass it back, and yeah, the opponent's going to need to deal 14 damage this turn. Find us one, as step one here. If they try to give protection from white to maybe get past our angels with a god's willing, we can crew the colossal plow, which is a colorless creature, which can maybe still block. It's going to be a show of confidence. Our opponents can potentially cast another show of confidence with the Arcanist. But as long as they can give Trample, we should be safe. So 
So that's a 17 powered Lumomancer. Try and soak up as much damage as possible. And then Parhelion can cross the finish line here. So this game ended up being pretty close, all things considered. I don't think the missed time to Wings of the Cosmos made a huge difference. But uh, yeah, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Kahira, the Orphan Guard deck, so could be just kind control. This hand's not amazing, but probably still keepable. Can always sacrifice Plow to Trash for Treasure if we pick up Parhelion. And then we can discard Frostbite, which is probably not going to be incredibly useful. Alright, it's going to be a turn one Grazer instead. It is a beast, so can still play it with Kahira. Terrarion, better card to sacrifice with a Trash for Treasure. So I'll play that and then give ourselves an extra draw step before casting the looting. Could also play turn two plow and then turn three looting, hopefully finding an ox so we can crew plow. Kind of like that idea as well. And then a third snow land can potentially kill Leaf Kindred. Sir points an elemental deck, the black probably for the uh, five mana legendary elemental. And there's snow covered mountain, so that enables frostbite. So let's loot. And Parhelion discarded is perfect. And this turn we will frostbite the leaf druid to slow them down. And next turn we get to trash for treasure back Parhelion, sacrificing Terrarion. So we're just missing Karn or Giant Ox to crew it. Alright, so let's trash. And we could still loot into an Ox. There's Yarok, as we suspected. So let's start by casting looting. Refurbish, not incredibly helpful. Alright, so we'll play the Terrarium to maybe next turn, draw into a Karn or Ox. But time's running out, since Yarok is gonna do some powerful things here in a second. Scampering Scorcher, making now double the number of 1-1 tokens. Thanks with all. Can sacrifice Terrarion. And another Trash for Treasure. Doesn't really do much for me. Can play Terrarion and then sacrifice it to Trash. To draw a card. And bring back another Terrarion, I suppose. And there's Karn, so next turn we could have been able to crew Parhelion, but need a Giant Ox as a cheaper alternative here. And uh, we're pretty dead on board. So yeah, we had an early Parhelion, but we were missing the last piece, which was crewing the Parhelion. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand's got double looting plow, so we're kind of hoping to draw into a giant ox to get an early plow to ramp into Karn. I'll try it. And then we can probably discard second Karn, maybe second looting, facing a Temple of Enlightenment. Come on, giant ox. No giant ox. Still tempted to discard looting. And then, do I discard a second Karn? If we're up against control, having a second Karn in hand might be useful in case the first one gets countered. So, discard lands, or seize the spoils then. Maybe I still discard a lands, since... We will have the treasure from seize the spoils to play Karn as well. Opponent Esper colored. And we'll play a plow. 
so and no giant ox in sight, no parhelion to discard. Opponent brainstorming in response to the plow. And there's refurbish, so yeah, we're just missing parhelion or ox. And then for now, I think we want to seize the spoils, probably discarding trash for treasure. Since we want to hit our land drops. That resolves. There's Parhelion, so we can discard that to looting to maybe refurbish back, and then Karn can crew it. Karn can also crew the Colossal Plow. Mastermind's Acquisition. Okay. Don't know what that got. So we've got an interesting choice. Karn crewing the Plow seems worth it, since that's a way to generate more mana. And then we can flashback looting with that mana. It will only be a 2-2, but still makes 3 mana here. And then discard Parhelion and probably another looting and play Terrarium. Well, our opponent might be playing some sort of combo deck with Acquisition. Not sure what kind of combo. Maybe we can disrupt it by getting something out of the sideboard with Karn. Bloodchief's Thirst can kill Plow for one mana. And our opponent passes. Well, um, step one, probably refurbish Parhelion. Don't think I need to sacrifice Terrarion for that. And see if this resolves. It does. Is our opponent maybe a reanimator deck? Do I need to get my... Tormod script. I don't think so. Can plus on Terrarion hit for one? Sure. Oh, say hello to my little friend. And if they kill it, we still draw a card. And then next turn we can crew Parhelion potentially. Could also get a Sorcerer's Spyglass to look at the opponent's hand. Heartless Act kills Terrarion, we draw. Opponent's got three mana up. And a Vanishing Verse, oh no! Exile Sparhelion. Alright, so we gotta go digging again. Or we can get something else with Karn. Could get, let's say, a Sky Sovereign. Which we can also start crewing. I could get Spyglass. Maybe our opponent's got a Planeswalker we can shut down. Sure. Alright. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Planar Cleansing. Yeah, uh, Planar Cleansing is going to be problematic. Since that can get rid of our Spyglass as well. If they have one more land. But still going to name Teferi here. And then double Terrarion at least. Means that if they wipe the board, we draw a few cards. But yeah, if they find a land here, we're in trouble. It's gonna be a search for Ascanta instead, which will transform pretty quickly. More Terrarions. So anything I can get with Karn that would be useful in this situation. Metalwork Colossus to an extent, although it's still too expensive to cast. And reanimating Parhelion also going to be tough when Planar Cleansing can be cast at any point. So not loving my position. Flashback looting and see what we pick up. Frostbite can still help take out a Teferi, but I don't know if we can afford to keep it in hand at this point. And then might as well get value with Karn. My grief and get Sky Sovereign. Play another Terrarium. Is 
So next turn, Ascanta can transform. Opponent can already cast Planar Cleansing. At least they lost their Ascanta. And Sky Sovereign can also damage Planeswalkers. Pretty close to casting Parhelion. So, what's the game plan here? Flashback looting, perhaps? And then... If I can play Plow this turn, we can threaten to crew it next turn. Although next turn I probably want to cast Parhelion, but we also want to be able to pressure to ferry. Yeah, I think I need to play Plow this turn, so discard Discovery and a land. And then... Next turn I can play Karn to potentially animate a Plow. Or we can play Sky Sovereign to deal 3 to Teferi. Best case scenario is a minus on the plow, so now Sky Sovereign can finish off Teferi. And at least our vehicles circumvent the sweepers nicely. Nars, that's fine. So I don't want them to find instant speed spot removal. Finds a brainstorm, but they don't have blue mana up. Ooh, Giant Ox can also crew Sky Sovereign, although we can take out Narsets no matter what here if we Karn animate Sky Sovereign. Although the downside of Karn animating Sky Sovereign is that it stays a creature during the opponent's turn, so they can kill it with a sweeper. So Giant Ox crewing Sky Sovereign might actually be better. And then we can still minus with Karn. I will my and now is probably a decent time to get a Metal War Colossus. Which we can potentially play for cheap. And then Sky Sovereign can go face. And deal 3 to Narset. Okay, opponent is at 9. They can get rid of my Ox. But uh, we'll still have a Karn to crew Sky Sovereign. Or Metal War Colossus can crew Sky Sovereign. Opponent's just digging with Brainstorm now. But they don't have a way to shuffle. And our opponent concedes. Alright, so we managed to beat Esper Control, albeit a bit of an unusual version. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice opening hand. Turn to Plow, can crew it with Ox, and ramps us straight into Karn. As much as this is a Parhelion deck, most of our wins come from an early Colossal Plow into Giant Ox. Opponent on a blue-red spells deck. And then we gotta think about what to get with Karn's minus ability, potentially. Warlord's Fury cycled. And it's plowing time. Uh. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a double looting discovery hand, so this is going to change quite a bit in the next few turns. And then we have Karn to potentially search some sideboard cards if needed. I'll try it. Now I might wait on casting looting, since we don't know yet if Frostbite is good in the matchup. And I might end up discarding a looting to discovery, so we don't lose any card advantage. Against Catria Trium, I'm gonna guess Frostbite is not useful, so I'm gonna discard a looting and a Frostbite. More lootings. So we can flash back looting next turn. Alright. Turn to Gilded Goose makes me regret my decision a little bit. But that's alright. 
So do we cast looting or flash it back? If we cast looting, we can potentially cast another one from our hand. And we have plenty of land, so we don't mind discarding one. And we're pretty desperate to find our refurbish next turn. So maybe it is worth it to double looting here. Giant Ox could still be okay. Can discard two lands since we only need four. And then I guess Snow Covered Land is better than Pathway. And then I can play Terrarion. And then we discard Parhelion, which I probably should have discarded with the previous looting. And uh, what else? I could discard Giant Ox because we have Karn. Yeah, I can buy that. Alright, so hopefully we draw into either Trash for Treasure or Refurbish, since now with Terrarion, Trash for Treasure also works. Mirror Image, Copying Goose. So this is probably a Neoform combo deck. Alright, I think now we sacrifice Terrarion in the hopes of finding Refurbish. And if not, we can seize the spoils. Alright, we're not quite getting there. Could always use Karn to get some sideboard card. Although we don't have Gravedigger's Cage, which would be a way to stop the Neoform combo. Comet Celebrant. I could get a Glass Casket to exile it. That doesn't seem incredibly impactful, but maybe that's still the play. Otherwise I can looting, but I wouldn't even be able to cast the trash for treasure if we draw into it, since I'll have to sacrifice the treasure in order to cast it in the first place. So yeah, I guess Karn Glass Casket's fine for now. And then next turn I could technically get something like a Sky Sovereign. Another mirror image. Frostbite can kill one goose. My purpose is greater than myself. Could also go for Cataclysmic Gearhulk. The opponent loses two of their geese and two of their food tokens, and then I can kill one of them with Frostbite. Although Sky Sovereign we can crew with Karn, so that's quite powerful. Let's go with Sky Sovereign. And keeping up Frostbite helps us potentially kill a Seagate Stormcaller in response to its Enter the Battlefield trigger. That way the opponent cannot sacrifice a two-drop with Neoform and copy it. So our opponent's combo not quite working out, although we can assume they have one of the combo pieces in hand at least. We'll hang on to Frostbite for now. And then flashback looting. Pretty close to hardcasting Parhelion, so maybe I don't discard another one here. And instead, probably don't need a second Karn right away. And discard a land. Tank with Sky Sovereign. It's gonna make a food token. I might as well flash back a looting. Shine Tox and Trash for Treasure. So Trash for Treasure can bring back Parhelion next turn, so I guess I don't need the one in hand now. And then I would like to sacrifice Terrarion, so maybe discard Giant Ox. Although if they find a way to kill Karn, I might want Giant Ox to crew. So maybe Frostbite's not needed after all. And then we'll play Terrarion. And next turn we can trash back 
Parhelion, and we'll have giant talks to crew any vehicles. All right, let's see for that. Just another land, mirror image, copying goose. Yeah, our deck was pretty slow to get going, but our opponent's deck never got going. Bring back Parhelion. Another looting. And then Karn animates Sky Sovereign, although we could crew it with Ox. That way it has one more power. Makes another food token. Didn't think there's anything I need to get with a minus two from Karn, but we can always check our sideboard to make sure. I guess we can cast uh, essentially three Metal War Colossus. I guess Platinum Angel would be a way not to die to the combo, but it's a bit late to get it now. So I guess we'll just plus... And now with two blockers we might be able to survive the Neoform combo since our opponent already lost their combat celebrant and multiple copies of Mirror Image. And let's just minus get a Platinum Angel just in case. I will not lose another friend. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a beautiful hand. Discovery to discard Parhelion, Refurbish to get it back, Giant Ox to crew it. So we've got everything we could hope for. The only downside is that we're on the draw, so might still be too slow. Turn one Motivator, so some sort of Goblins deck. Frostbite's interesting. So we have a lot of options. I can just play Giant Ox as a blocker, I can... Discovery right now, or we could play Tapland, Frostbite. Kind of like just playing the Ox as a blocker. And then next turn we can maybe Discovery and Frostbite. And we might draw into another card that we don't need, because right now I do need up to four lands. I want Refurbish and probably Frostbite, so we didn't really have a second card we actively wanted to discard. So our opponent on maybe a bit of a strange build of goblins. Three mana passes, second ox we can discard. And we'll hang on to frostbite. Now if our opponent has a Krenko next turn, we won't be able to kill it since we don't have enough snow lands in play. And do I want a faithless looting? Not really. So yeah, hopefully Krenko doesn't come out. I guess I could take two and then Frostbite the Motivator. Yeah, that's probably worth it. Should have just played an untapped land that didn't cost me life. But if they play Krenko, killing Motivator in response so they can give it haste, it's probably worth it. Scampering Scorcher instead. Alright, that's fine. Gives everyone haste anyway. And then I guess we'll kill the Motivator now. Right, time for Refurbish. And hopefully Giant Ox can crew it next turn. And that should close out the game in two attacks. We could have also crewed Parhelion on defense, but don't want to expose it to sorcery speed burn spells that can finish it off. A light of the stage for one mana, find Scorch Pitter. So this must be a Cavalcade of Calamity deck. Karn can also crew Parhelion, which adds even more power. So yeah, let's go for it. And then we'll still have a Giant Ox on defense. Away 
Taken. A tank, make her angels. And we can still play a Terrarion. A lightning strike face. So it's possible that they had five points of burn to kill Parhelion. And yeah, there we see shock. But luckily Karn turns it into an 8-8, so Parhelion was saved and her opponent was defeated. Sweet. So yeah, overall, had some fun games with our janky Parhelion deck. Definitely not a competitive choice, but uh, a lot of fun if you can make it work. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.